Hello everybody, Z3KO Trinity. Welcome to Stephen King Sundays. Today I am going to be doing Stephen King previews on three books. The very first one is The Colorado Kid. This book is garbage, by the way. Actually, it's not garbage, but it wasn't very good. I did not like it. But if you watch the show uh, Haven... It uh, is their own redemption of this story, and I think they did a little bit more justice to it. But, if you don't know who Stephen King is, and you walked into a little old liquor store and saw this sitting on, the, on a rack, would you be like, gasp, I must look at this book. First off, we're going to take a look at the cover here. We got a uh, damsel in distress here. Uh, in lingerie, she's got a recording device, so she's obviously seductive, and uh, obviously not a real brunette, or redhead, or whatever they were going with, but uh, instant, you know, reporter woman, Lois Lane on the front cover, and then you have the whole backgrounds in red, and it's like um, newspaper clipping, it says murder right there, and all this kind of stuff. It's a hard case crime book, um, has Stephen King on the cover, says the name, and it says, Would she learn the dead man's secret? Would that, is that enough, like, was that enough art to really just say, Hey, I need to look at this. I think so. I think it did a really nice job on the art for the paperback. I think that uh, it will draw people in. Uh, let's see what it says on the back, shall we? On an island off the coast of Maine, a man is found dead. There's no identification on the body, only the dodged work of a pair of local newspapermen and a graduate student in forensics turns up any clues, and it's more than a year before the man is identified. Oh, well, at least we know that this book takes a span of a year for them to identify this guy. And that's just the beginning of the mystery, because the more they learn about the man and the baffling circumferences of his penis, I mean of his death, they less understand what is what it and was it an impossible crime or something stranger still question mark was that enough uh like if you picked up the book and you're like, mm, what's it about?" and you read that, would it be enough to really go? Oh, I think I will read this. <clears throat> I think the mystery of the dead body kind of pulls me in. But everything else just kind of made me like... Oh. But that's just my opinion. Uh, they could have done a little bit better with the, with the back of the book. In my own professional opinion, if you will. And then, uh, take out my cue card where I read it. Let's go, uh, if that wasn't enough to really catch, capture y'all's attention, we're going to read the first paragraph of the book and see if that will draw you in. After deciding he would get nothing of interest from the two old men who compromised the entire staff of the Weekly Islander, the feature writer from the Boston Globe took a look at his watch, remarked, that he could just make the 130 ferry back to the mainland if he hurried. Thank them for their time, drop some money on the tablecloth, weight it down with the salt shaker so the stiffish onshore breeze wouldn't blow it away, and hurried down the stone steps from the Grey Gulls patio dining area toward Bay Street and the little town below. Other than a few curious uh, cursory leaps at her breasts, her, her big fat titties, he hardly noticed the young woman sitting between the two old men at all. So, this woman with huge ass titties is sitting in between these two old men, and he just like, out of the blue, no sir. He's been interviewed after deciding he would get nothing of interest from these two old men. Uh, you know, he's packing up his stuff like, thank you guys for nothing and all of a sudden there's a there's a pair of titties between you guys and so 
he realizes, hey, there was an actual woman there. But uh, that whole paragraph, was that enough to draw your guys' attention? I think, I like the way that it was written. I think it's kind of poetic. Um, does it grab my attention? Not really. But uh, let me try a little bit further. Once the Globe Rider was gone, Vince Teague reached across the table and re removed the bills. Two fifties from beneath the salt shaker. He tucked them into a flap pocket of his old but serviceable te tweed jacket with a look of unmistakable satisfaction. Hmm. From the look he gets when he farts. <clears throat> what are you doing? Stephanie McCain asked knowing how much Vince enjoyed shocking what he called her young bones. How much they both did, really. Wink, wink. But in this instance, not able to keep the shock out of her voice. So, still, it doesn't really draw me in too much, but I guess the story has to start somewhere, and uh, I'm sure... The further we get into it, the more it will draw us in. Yeah. But if I saw this in a store, picked it up, looked at the cover, read the which she learned the dead man's secret, read this back piece, and just briefly read like a paragraph or two of the first page, would that be enough to really say, you know what, I'm going to buy this book? So let me know in the comment section below what you think. And as always, we're going to read the very last word of the story. The last word of the story is story. Wow. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Did uh, Colorado Kid really drag you in? Next up on our lineup is Stephen King's Cell. Which, oddly enough, this was the very first Stephen King book I ever got to own so and mostly because I liked the front cover so does the front covers art is it enough to draw your attention it was to me it this cup is knocked over poured over onto a sidewalk it's leaking blood out of it the cell phone has a crack in it with it, which is pouring blood out of the cell phone has a guy uh, shadow inside the blood I just think that they did a really good job with this front cover. Uh, if I saw this sitting in a bookstore, I'd whip it out and... You, you pervs? I was whipping out my wallet to pay the guy for the book, perverts. But, uh, yeah, I would have definitely got this. And I remember going to my aunt's house and I saw this in my uncle's bookshelf. And... Uh, like the way he has his book set up is like sideways like this where you can actually see the covers and i looked at it and i was like wow that looks cool okay but uh if you don't know who stephen king is and you see this you pick it up and on the back of the book is just old stephen king hanging out of the back of what looks to be like a train uh door thing so it's like the train's about to stop. He's like, whoa! Almost going to fall out of the train. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, we're going to pull this and we're going to see exactly what it says. There's a reason cell rhymes with hell. It also rhymes with fell, as in Fellowship of the Ring. It's a Lord of the Rings story. Oh, where y'all going? Y'all just gonna leave? Uh, on October 1st, God is in his heaven. The stock market stands at 10140 Most of the planes are on time, and Clayton Riddle, an artist from Maine, is almost bouncing up Bo Boylston Street in Boston. He's just landed a comic book deal sold it's comic. It's about comic books. Sold. He's landed a comic book deal that might finally enable him to support his family by making art instead of teaching it. He's already picked up a small but expensive gift for his long-suffering wife. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> 
and he knows just what he'll get for his boy Johnny. His good old boy Johnny! <laughs> I wonder if it's a comic book. Why not a little treat for himself? Clay feels good about the future. That changes in a hurry. The cause of the devastation is a phenomenon that will come to be known as the pulse. And the delivery method is a cell phone. Everyone's cell phone. Clay and a few desperate survivors who join him suddenly find themselves in the pitch black night of civilization's darkest age, surrounded by chaos, carnage, and a human horde that has been reduced to its basest nature and then begins to evolve. Was that enough to make you guys go, hmm, I think I'll read this book. Uh-huh. Honestly, yes. It was enough to make me read this book. Even though I haven't read it yet. But it is enough to rip makes me want to read this. Like, this might be my next Stephen King book I read. It's on my to-do list. But if that little bit right there was not enough... <laughs> Stephen King lives in Maine with his wife, the novelist Tabitha King. He does not own a cell phone. <laughs> Bullshit! He tweeted me last night! But, um, he sent me a picture of these nuts! But if that wasn't enough to really get your guys' motor going, let's uh, see what the first uh, paragraph is, shall we? This book was dedicated to Richard Matheson and George Romero, who had passed away last year. Chapter 1, The Pulse. The Pulse. The event that came to be known as The Pulse began at 3.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the afternoon of October 1st. The term was a mis misnomer. Misnomer? Misnamer? Misnamor, of course, but within 10 hours of the event. Most of the scientists capable of pointing this out were either dead or insane. The name hardly mattered in any case. What mattered was the effect. At 3 o'clock that day, a young man of no particular importance to history came walking almost bouncing east along Boston Street in Boston. His name is Clayton Riddle. There was an expression of undoubted com contentment on his face to go along with the spring in his step. From his left hand, there swung the handles of an artist's portfo portfolio, the kind that closes and latches to make a traveling case. Twined around the fingers of his right hand, was the drawstring of a brown plastic shopping bag with the words small testicles, I mean small treasures, printed on it for anyone who cared to read them. So now that we've read the first paragraph, was that enough? So if you went into a library, picked this book up, looked at the cover of the book, read the little side intro, read the first paragraph of the book, would it be enough to say, yeah, I will give this book a shot? I say, hell yeah, it does. They delivered this book flawlessly. I'm interested in reading it. I love the cover. I think it is great. Absolutely great. I think they did a really good job with this one. And as always, we're going to read the very last word of the book. Maybe. Possibly. Let's see. Alright, right here. Hey, Johnny G, he said. Fo-fo-yo-yo. -yo, and pressed the cell against his son's ear. Okay. Fo-fo-yo-yo, -yo, son. Come here. I want you to listen to the fo-fo-yo-yo. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below if that book was enough to make you want to buy it. Uh, uh, excuse me. Get these cards back in these books. 
And finally, we got Lizzie's Story. Now, I don't own the hardback. I would love to have the hardback version. But I really do like the cover of this book. Uh, it's just a shovel. Really nice, clean looking shovel. And it has a big snow area. <laughs> which reminds me of two weeks ago. And it has like footprints walking in the snow. And it has the shovel. So, And I also like how it says in this corner, their love was just the first chapter. I love that. That's really interesting to me. But uh, if you see this in a store, if I saw this in the store, would I pick it up? And funny story is, I did get this book before I even knew who Stephen King was. Um, my grandma picked it up. This is actually her copy, but she bought it for herself. And uh, I was looking at it, and I thought, mm, this looks really good, just because of the uh, art on it. But uh, every marriage has two hearts, one light and one dark. Lizzie Landon shared a profound and sometimes frightening intimacy with her husband, Scott, a celebrated best-selling novelist and a man with many secrets. One was the place where his gifts of imagination came from, a place that could heal or destroy him. Now, two years after his death, it's Lizzie's turn to face Scott's demons on a nearly fatal journey into the darkness that he inhabited. That was very, very well written. I love poetically stuff like that. If more books had like back stuff on the back covers of the books like that, I would definitely love, like it would definitely sell it to me. If Colorado Kid had something kind of like that, I'd be like, mm, okay, it's coming home with me. But I really do like that. I think that uh, it sparks, um, definitely sparks my uh, interest in it and just love it. And uh, my fiance would love this part. It says, Dazzling, Stephen King at his finest and most generous. And that's a quote from Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> but, um, oh, where do you go when you're lonely? Where do you go when you're blue? Where do you go when you're lonely? I'll follow you when the stairs go blue. Stars go blue. That was the quote in the thing. All right, here we go. Let's read the first paragraph. One, Lizzie and Amanda, everything the same. To the public eye, the spouses of well-known writers are all but invisible, and no one knew it better than Lizzie Landon. Her husband had won the Pulitzer and National Book Award, but Lizzie had only one interview in her life. This was the well-known woman's magazine that publishes the column, Yes, I'm Married to Him. She spent roughly half of its 500-word length explaining that her nickname rhymed with CC. Most of the other half had to do with her recipe for slow-cooked roast beef. Lizzie's sister Amanda said that the picture accompanying the interview made Lizzie look fat. Like a big fat cow. Like a big fat fat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that first paragraph, it was actually quite funny. I, uh, found it kind of comical uh it didn't bore me when i was reading it so yeah i would definitely continue reading uh colorado kid i probably would definitely have put it back down on the shelf somewhere if i didn't know it was stephen king like if i did not know who stephen king was and i went through all that i definitely wouldn't have taken this one home with me but the cell i definitely would have and lizzie's story i would have um, I think that they, they did a real good job uh, doing those books. But that's just the preview of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below, below uh, which one appealed to you the most, which one didn't. Um, if you think completely opposite of the way I did with this one, let me know. But, uh, yeah. And also for my last announcement, uh, Horror Vlog is now going to be every single Wednesday. There's not going to be any more two-week things unless something by God happens and I can't record a video for that Wednesday. 
But uh, if I can't, I will definitely follow up the next day. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be bringing back my horror vlogs every single Wednesday. Might not be as great or as grand, but eh, I'm going to bring them back because I want to do them. But yeah, please let me know. And also, every single Sunday, you're going to see a Stephen King thing. Whether it's previews, whether it's fake reviews, whether it's a brand new show that I'm getting ready to come, out, uh, come up with. Uh, for Stephen King. I have a few ideas, but nothing quite solid yet. I want a good, solid idea for a Stephen King video. So I'm, de I'm definitely going to be giving you guys the breakdown of this channel. It's going to be awesome. After New Year's, it's going to be Z3KO 2.0. It's going to be titled the same Z3KO Trinity, but this is the reawakening of my channel. And just know that every Wednesday you're going to get a horror vlog and every Sunday is a Stephen King Sunday. The rest, we'll have to see in time. But that's all I have. You guys have anything to say? Please let me know in the comment section below. And with that, I guess...